On today's episode of Glow Trotting with Trey, you are going to hear an interview with Farley Guy, one of Elvis's childhood friends that grew up with him at Lauderdale Courts. Farley knew Elvis before Elvis was a superstar. You will hear about stories of Elvis at Lauderdale Courts, Elvis singing, Elvis swimming, Elvis being inducted into the army, Elvis before Elvis was known to the world. So be sure to like this video for me, share it with your Elvis friends, don't double dribble, subscribe to Glow Trotting with Trey for new episodes each Tuesday on Elvis Presley. Now, let's get to the interview with Farley Guy, Elvis's childhood friend. Stay tuned. <laughs> what it was like to live there at Lauderdale Courts and to just be friends with Elvis during that time in your life. Well, there's four of us running around together. It was Elvis and Buzzy, and they called him Buzzy, Evan Porgus, but he got cancer pretty bad. And, uh, but uh, Paul Dewar, and he's dead, and naturally Elvis is dead, but uh, me and Buzzy are the only two that is left that really run around with Elvis until he got, you know, singing, he got kind of big, and old Colonel Parker kind of robbed him, you know, with a lifetime contract and half of what he made. But uh, I never did think too much of Colonel Parker. But uh, anyway, uh, uh, we I met him when I was 12 years old when my daddy died. My mama moved into the and that's when I met Elvis. Now, is this right? Did uh, did you actually live upstairs above him? Yeah, I lived on the second floor. Paul Dewar lived on the third floor. And Buzzy lived around. Right. Evan Barbers lived right around the corner from us. And we all run around together. And did anybody smoke or drink or do any of that kind of stuff. But... Uh, and then he got his draft notice in the service, and he called me. I mean, I don't know where he called me. I called him, but I talked to him. And uh, about a year, he got it postponed for a while. And about a year later, I got mine. Okay. And we went off to Fort Smith together, but he didn't stay at Fort Smith. He went on to Texas and then went on to Germany, and I went uh do the basic training twice there at uh, Fort Smith, and he uh, he went to Germany, and that's where he met Priscilla. When uh, I never did meet her, even though I I went out there, we we both got discharged at the same time. Met back in Memphis, and uh, we went skiing, and first one thing or another for about a week. But I was married, and I had to get back to my job. Yes, sir. So he did stay in touch with you guys uh, after after the army and after you guys become adults. Oh yeah, he, he did stay about two or three days, and he kept. It was so open over at Fort Smith that traffic, you know, just come and go as as it at will, you know. And he uh, they decided to send him on to Texas. You know, I, I'm looking right now, I see a lot of great pictures of you and Elvis during uh, the induction into the Army. Right. Tell me about that day, uh, Mr. Guy. What, what, what was, how was the hoopla surrounding that day when you and Elvis got inducted into the Army? Well, I don't really know how he thought about it all, but anyway, uh, uh, but I took my basic eight weeks of basic training at, at uh, Fort Smith. He went on to, you know, to... Uh, Texas, and uh, and I didn't see him no more until we got out of the army. Yeah, I read I read a story where I think that you took him out boating one afternoon. Took him where? Uh, out on a boat back in Memphis. Oh yeah, we we were skiing and put around down in McKellar Lake for about a week, and then. Uh, like I said, I had to get back home and get back to work. And uh, I went out there several times, but it was such a hassle, you know, to get in. Also, people on the gate would change from time to time, and uh, which I 
went out several times off and on through the years there, but the last 10 years of his life, I, I didn't get to see him much, you know. So do you, do you remember the last time you saw Elvis? Uh, I don't know. Like I said, I'm 85 years old. Oh, and, yes, sir. <laughs> yes, sir. And his birthday was in January. Mine was in June. He was about six months older than I was. Oh wow! Okay, but uh, but you said that y'all became friends when you're around twelve years old. Is that right? Right. Can you tell me any stories about uh, you, any fun stories that you can remember from Lauderdale Courts? Well, you know, uh, did any of us have any money at that time? You know, and we didn't have a whole lot. To, uh, we went to Suzanne Theater. They had two of them. One up on North Main. One down there on Jackson Avenue. Uh, we tried to one time get, get a job. In fact, I got a job as a carpenter shipper the first year that I met him, uh, carrying the timbers and two by fours and everything, the nails and everything for the guy that was building the building out there behind Kennedy Hospital. He didn't have no work. Then the next year we didn't get no jobs. In fact, we went out to a place called Precision Two Company. And they, as soon as they signed, find out how old we are, was, you know, it, he didn't, they didn't hire us. And finally, I got a job the next summer uh, at uh, Scholar Supermarket down there across from, uh, you might well say, St. Joe's Hospital and the Kids Hospital now, you know. Uh-huh. Uh, we went to the theater quite a bit, you know, but we go two for a quarter Monday through Thursday. And uh, I was delivering groceries at that time, and, uh, and then finally I got a job for another company. I'm not gonna call no names, nothing. But I was 16, and uh, I, I like a month being 18 years old when the front office found out about it. So they put me on from two to ten in the evening to get by the child labor law. Yes, sir. They talked about. They talked about fire me but uh i was doing real good with the job that i had and uh they kept me on and uh uh i wanted to buy a farm down at uh, arkabuddle mississippi just about 100 acres and it's right off the government land there on that lake but uh, he told me don't worry about it and uh, uh he'd buy a farm one day and he did a place on 301, I believe, was going from Memphis down to Arca Butler. Yeah, the Circle G Ranch. Yeah. So he, he told you not to worry about it, that he would buy one one day. <laughs> right. But uh, I, I never did go down there. Uh, by then, I had two or three kids and working two jobs, and, which I worked at... Uh, at that time, at Dixie Wax Printing Company, I played my mind in a job we printed. Uh, we printed a tape chip bag and bread wrappers and stuff like that. And, uh, but I didn't see the last 10 years of his life. If I had known that he had done got in that position to uh, where he had to take something to liven up or something to calm him down at bedtime well uh, I would have wouldn't have talked to him I don't know if it would have done any good or not but I would but he was married to Priscilla then and uh, I never did meet her you never did meet Priscilla uh, did you remember um did you remember Dixie Locke do I remember what uh his girlfriend there during when he was there at Humes I believe was Dixie uh no, I don't remember her, but I remember uh, another girl. I had her name on my mind. I started talking and looking at her. Billy Wardlow was her name from Coldwater, Mississippi. She lived on the third floor of the next row of apartments over. It was three sections of that building we lived in. It was the middle of it where we lived, the one back to the her right and one back to the left. She lived upstairs. Uh, or her name was Billy Wardlow. It was was that was that a girlfriend of Elvis's? Yeah. Wow. Okay. 
I wonder if she is one of these girls I see. You know, you and Elvis and Buzzy and Paul have a few pictures together during that time. And I believe there's a picture of Elvis and Buzzy and two girls are in that picture. Could she be one of those uh, girls? I, I think the picture you're talking about it was a picture of me and Elvis and two girls. That's it. Yes, sir. That's actually you in that picture. That's awesome. Right. Who, do you remember those two girls? No, I don't. They were just... Some, some girl here last, last year wrote to uh, my... I got a son that's... Uh, that's about 55 years old, and uh, they sent him to an old address because his name was Farley Guy, too. Okay. But anyway, the lady called my daughter, which was used to live in that subdivision up there in Henderson, Tennessee, and uh, sent some pictures, and uh, that picture there was in that bunch of stuff. On, I couldn't name them because I couldn't remember them, but I did have the pictures printed and sent back to my daughter, sent them back to the girl. Well, I'm just, you know, I'm just glad that there's pictures of you and Elvis that exist during that time. Yeah, oh yeah. Yeah, because it, 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 you know, the, the, the painting that they've tried to paint the picture of Elvis during that time in his life is that he was, he was just a shy kid and didn't have any friends or anything, but that's not true. Yeah, he didn't have, a, he, the four of us was it. At that time, uh, I was living in Lauderdale Courts. Well, can you tell me about this place? Because I'm very fascinated to learn uh, of the place called the Triangle. There at Lauderdale Courts. I I guess it was an area that you guys would go and play baseball and just hang out Uh, at? We played football. We didn't play touch football. We played regular tackle. Tackle football. No no nothing, yeah. That was football. (laughs) Those are they were down, at, down at the end of the, where the court kind of turned and went uh, another direction down in there. And the triangle was, yeah. Yeah, I've heard some famous stories about that triangle. One of the stories I heard was, I guess there was a few big trees out there. Do you remember that? I have a few trees right along uh, the uh, by the apartments, but out in the field, it was it was wide open. Yes, sir, and that would have been where the triangle was. Yeah. Uh, uh, one of the stories that I read was that Elvis would sit out there and sing. Would do what? He would sit out there and play his guitar or sing or something for for some people. Well, he done that right in front of the Lauderdale Courts at 185 uh, North Winchester, I think, and 3rd Street right there. 3rd Street come down right by the courts. Yeah, right out there on the steps. Yeah, I, I, right there on the steps out front there. So you do we, re, you do remember Elvis singing to y'all? Do I remember what? <clears throat> you do remember Elvis singing and playing a Oh, g- yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I was kind of a Hank Williams fan, you know, but, you know, I just kid stuff. But uh, anyway, I got him to play a little bit of Hank Williams stuff, but most time he's just clowning. Oh, so playing. he... So he would play Hank Williams. Oh yeah, <laughs> that's amazing, man. That's amazing. He did a lot of you know stuff, and in fact, uh, he even uh, uh, Blue Moon of Kentucky, and uh, uh, I think some of them in that movie he made, you know, with uh, some guys. Uh, we all went to him for. I I went back to the country where I was raised out there with my granddaddy, and uh, in uh, the eighth grade I should have stayed in Memphis. I didn't, but I went back out there, and uh, I went to uh, uh, Humes in the ninth grade. So you were in Elvis's class at Humes? No, I was. Uh, I, was to, I played a couple of times during them school years. That's the reason my mom and daddy sent me to the country with my granddaddy, where I rode a horse school for about five miles. I had a uh, aunt that lived right next to the school, and that's where I kept the horse during the daytime. Oh, so you would ride a horse to school? Oh, uh, yeah, from the third grade through the uh, seventh, I think it was. That's amazing, and, Mr. Guy. 
<laughs> and I left five miles from school, but I took kind of the back roads through the fields and first one place or another, but still. It, uh, back in them days, we had some pretty good winters, you know. Oh, yes, sir. And, uh, but I never missed a day in. But I did stay in Memphis with my mama, but I was trying to help her, you know, because I had, uh, three sisters, but two of them were still at home with me and my mom. In fact, I, I helped my mama up to, uh, me and another sister took her and kept her to laugh. She liked about six months being a hundred year old. Oh, that is awesome. And, uh, I said she'd never go to a nursing home. But there for a long time, I, after I got back out of the Army, I got back in the horse business. I was just thinking about, uh, Buzzy had told me, and I believe you may have been with him, or it could have been Paul, but he was telling me about, I, I guess, one of the last times that he saw Elvis was at a New Year's party. And he said that Elvis pulled him and either you or Paul into a closet there at the party to talk to y'all. Could that have been you? Do you remember anything like that? Well, I remember the party, but I don't remember the closet. No way to, you know, like I said, I had a stroke back in 2016. A lot of things are not clear to me. I understand. Hey, but you sound really great. I mean, you you sound really great, and you said your mom lived to be 100, so you have some good genes, Mr. Guy. I doubt that. <laughs> <laughs> he said he doubts that, huh? <laughs> Yeah. Well, well, you were telling me, though, and you, you told me about you guys would go to the Suzor. Right. Which, so you said on, is it Jackson Street or Jackson Avenue? No, it went on Jackson Street, Suzor, and his old man, I think he, he worked in the National Harvester. I don't know this for sure, you know, and be honest about it, but I did know he owned a lot of land over around Desert, Arkansas. Off of White River, over. okay. But that was years later that I found out that. But so with with the Suzor, one on, uh, one on Main Street up at North Main. So which one did y'all go to the most? The one up on North Main. North Main. That was closer to Lauderdale. Yes, it just well, it was Third Street, Second Street, and that Main. You know, and uh, it wasn't two or three blocks up there at the most. You know. Do you remember any movie that y'all saw there? Most of them were, you know, Western, you know, like uh, Johnny Mac Brown and uh, Roy Rogers and uh, Gene Autry and them kind of movies, you know. Yeah, and you had no idea, you had no idea that one day your friend would be up there. No, I didn't. What was that like for you when Elvis first become like a star? How did that make you feel, Mr. Guy? Oh, I, thought a lot of it, but uh, in fact, I, every now and then I see an old movie come on TV, you know, that he was in. Yeah, I bet that just brings back memories to you, though, don't it? Oh, yeah, yeah. To see him young and like that. Right. Yeah, I mean, that's the Elvis you knew, that young Elvis. and. Right. That's amazing, man. That's amazing. Buzzy was telling me, and you may have been with them, Buzzy was telling me that you guys would go swimming up at Malone Pool. Yeah, we did. Can Every you tell time. me about that pool? Was it a big pool or what? Yeah, it was a big pool. Oh, it was a government pool, a city pool, you know. Yeah, he down said that. No, uh, Second Street, I believe, down in North Memphis, the other side of us, you know, wasn't far down there, but seven, eight blocks or ten, I don't know. But y'all would walk out there, right? Oh, yeah, we had to, we didn't. <laughs> Didn't us have no money or no car. Elvis' daddy was still living though then, mm -hmm. and his mama she was kind of a sickly type person. But I, I knew Vernon Percy and I knew his mama. But uh, the first house he bought at the where he moved out of Lauderdale Court down there on Fourth Street or Seventh Street or some some street down there, and uh, which I done moved down there on. Uh, about a half a mile from Lauderdale Court. Uh, they made us move when I got that job out there at uh, the company I was working for. That, uh, uh, I was to 
trying to think of the name of it. But anyway, uh, uh, I live down on Parkway, just about seven, eight blocks from where I put Lauderdale Court, you might well say, and, and they was moved down on, and Pa uh, and his mama moved down there somewhere pretty close to her. I know he lived on, it. was it Alabama Street? No, nah, it wasn't Alabama. I don't know. It was, uh, it was, it was there in North Memphis, just the other side of St. George Hospital and all back in there. Okay. Back towards, uh, I might well say, a little bit to the north of Lauderdale Court. So how did you enjoy today's episode? Let me know below in the comments. Be sure to give me a thumbs up if you liked it. And share it with your friends. And don't double dribble subscribe to Glow Trotting with Trey to stay updated with every new video that I upload, which is once every Tuesday and special ones here and there. Next week, stay tuned for part two of Elvis's friend, Barley Guy. You do not want to miss it. Until next time, I'll see you down the road. Thanks for watching.